Are you an overlander, van lifer, or RVer who's looking to expand your electrical capacity? Well, I'm none of those things. <laughs> so still, check out my solution for adding 100 amp hours of lithium power to my mobile ham station. Welcome to my channel and thanks for being here. The truth is my secondary battery setup was inspired by overlanders, van lifers, and RVers. So if what I'm about to share here can be used in your van, off-road vehicle, or even a small RV setup, then I, I hope it's helpful. Let's just jump in and I'll just get right to it. This is a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery pack. These are called LifePo 4 batteries. It's made from four 3.2 volt cells wired in series for a total of 12.8 volts. I built the pack, installed it, and then removed it for painting. And while it was out for painting, I rewired the cells in parallel, top balanced them to 3.65 volts using a power supply, and then put them back in series and reinstalled them. This was after I had painted this box here. The cells are currently resting at 3.32 volts for a total of 13.28 volts. Why the extra power? Well, my AGM starter battery is a group 48 12 volt battery that's rated at 67 amp hours. Believe it or not, that's an upgrade. The stock battery was smaller. It was a group 47 rated for less. I don't remember what it was. Only half of that is usable for deep cycling. So that's 34 amp hours that I can use for powering my accessories versus if I use this 100 amp hour, only 80% of it, that's 80 amp hours that I can use. So that's over double the capacity. Plus when I use this battery instead of the starter battery, there's no impact to the starter battery. The starter battery is available only for starting the car. It's always fresh. The lithium cells can output up to 200 amps. However, my selection of this uh, battery management system or BMS, it limits me to uh, only 120 amps. The BMS is sold by Radio B Tech and it's 120 amp rating as well within my current power demand. I may get a 200 amp BMS at some point, perhaps if I decide to add an HF amplifier to the mix and that thing pulls 80 amps all by itself but I'm not in a big rush to spend that kind of money or do any upgrades to this. I'm very happy with what I have right now. The BMS can be monitored with a smartphone app by Shaosheng. I think that's how you say that. I'm not sure if the BMS is also made by Shaosheng and then quietly rebranded by other sellers, but that app seems to work with most of the BMSs that I've seen that look like this and have other brand names stamped on them. So. I don't know if Shaosheng's making them or not, and I guess it's not important. What's important is it works, and it works very well. And all of this is highly regarded in solar, uh, solar energy circles. Charging current, cell temperature, overall voltage, and individual cell health are very easy to see at a glance, even while I'm driving. And there's much more to see or configure by diving deeper into the menus. Comment below if you'd like a video with more detail about the app. I don't plan to dive that deep into it in this video. Now, speaking of cell temperature, lithium batteries cannot be charged when it's below freezing, not without causing damage anyway. And that's part of what the BMS does is it, it I have these two sensors on here. There's one right here. This is the Bluetooth module, by the way. And I have another sensor right here and these are the temperature sensors that tell the BMS if the cells are above freezing. So if they're above freezing, then charging is allowed. And if they're below freezing, then they get locked out. It will also lock out charging if the cells are too hot. That seems unlikely in my environment here. My equipment spaces, both here in the rear seat delete and here under the trunk floor, they do a great job of retaining heat. So I haven't found myself with a battery that's below freezing. Not yet anyway. I have seen a couple of nights so far where the temperature, the lows, got to around 28 degrees. But in here, in this space, the battery never got below about 35. So I haven't seen it happen yet, the charging being blocked out. The charger itself does emit quite a bit of heat, which can warm this whole space here. Ironically, it can't emit heat unless it's able to charge. So if it's already below freezing in here and the charger is locked out, 
then it by itself cannot generate heat to warm the battery. So what I've done is uh, I've added a, a small heater underneath this whole box. And what the heater is, is it's a, a 12 volt RV holding tank heating pad. And it's under this box. And I could connect it to the lithium battery and basically have the battery keep itself warm full time. But instead, I wired it to my panel back here and it operates when the engine is running and the space here, the battery, is below 45 degrees. And so charging will still be halted first thing in the morning, but I think the heater will warm the battery cells within maybe 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes of driving. And that's the case in my area where it, it typically doesn't get down to, we hardly ever see it get below, say, 15 degrees. If you're up in the Midwest someplace where it gets down really far below freezing, that might be a different story. But here where I am in Virginia, this is fine. Another unusual source of heat in here. You may know that I have the Bond Performance catback exhaust and his uh, muffler is right here under the driver's side rear seat area. And it does put some heat into the space and so that does help warm the space and that could play a little part in why there's some heat retained here in this space long after the car is shut down. You're probably wondering why did I do this to my car? Um, I do a lot of remote operating with my mobile ham radios and that can be stressful on the starter battery. Idling the car to maintain a good battery charge is an option, but I just don't like that idea at all. I can turn the car off and use the batteries and, and operate ham and then just restart every now and then to let it charge on and off, but I really don't like doing that either. In fact, um, I had installed this uh, bypass switch that would allow me to turn the, keep the ham radios on even when the power is shut off to the electronics panel. And I have, uh, <laughs> I've left that switch on by accident a, a few times and has killed the, the starter battery overnight. And that's, uh, that's never any fun, dead starter battery. And I do have a good solution. Check out uh, this video up here for my solution. It's a, it's a jump pack. It's way better than uh, jumper cables. In fact, uh, it's on sale right now, Cyber Monday type of stuff going on. I think you can get deals on it through, uh, through Christmas. Anyway, I knew I wanted to install a second battery, but it was uncertain of where I would place the size. I knew I wanted a large one, and so where would I put it? And so while considering my options, my local ham radio club organized a group battery build, and, and I knew instantly I was in. And the planning started in August, getting the parts took a little while, and then finally in November everything was here and we built everything. Now the club's practice is to build everything into an ammo box like this, right? And so this is cool for portability, but it's it's a little big. I, I was thinking that I would put whatever batteries I built back here behind the passenger seat, but it won't fit. And I don't want it loose in the trunk either. And so uh, I knew that I wanted a different solution. Now to get everything to fit in that box, what they do is they stack the battery cells in what I will refer to as a one by four configuration. So you take one cell and stack them on top of the rest and you make a tall stack of, of battery cells, four of them. Well, what I did is I went with a two by two configuration. So it's got a larger footprint, but it is shorter. I wanna say that this is 1.6, 3.2 inches tall plus the, uh, the BMS is a little thicker. This box, I want to say, is about four and a half inches tall and everything fits inside. And then when I close this hatch, it's all secured under there, hidden and no obstructions or anything. Obviously, I power my ham radios with this battery, but I decided to put just about every accessory I have on the battery as well. I have on the battery, my ham radios, their voltage regulator, a GMRS radio, the Raspberry Pi that I use for uh, my D-Star access point, a refrigerator freezer, which usually sits right here when this door is closed. And so it's normally right here. In fact, here's the, the power cable for it whenever I plug it in. Overlanders rejoice, right? Fridge in the car. I have a 400 watt voltage inverter under the passenger seat here, and that's actually powering my studio lights right now. There's a WeBoost cellular booster under the driver's seat and my Blackview dash cam, uh, front and back, those are also powered off of all of this. And I've got a nice little uh, fuse strip here, and I have some 
empty circuits where I can add more if I want. Also in this setup I have uh, this 135 amp circuit breaker and the purpose of it, this is actually the second breaker in the system. The first one is up at the battery and so if I turn that one off, if I need to service my electronics panel, I can open the breaker at the battery and that cuts off power to the back of the car here but it does not cut off the battery, the lithium batteries. And so this breaker, simply push that button. Oh, and I just, you just heard everything turn off. Uh, you push that button and it disconnects the battery so I can service all of this as well and it'd be safe. So the only hot point in here is right here on this. And then I can service my fuses or disconnect or undo my wires here. And then to turn it back on, I simply flip that switch there and then you can see all the lights and everything came back on. And so uh, a very safe install here. And on top of all of that, I also wired in the factory 12 volt outlets because once I killed my battery by accidentally leaving something turned on that was plugged into the 12 volt outlet. And that might've been my, my smartphone charger. I don't quite recall. So basically everything runs off of this battery. I don't think I have anything running off the starter battery anymore. So basically when the car is parked, the only thing that starter battery powers is the things that Volkswagen's engineers wanted to have powered, such as uh, cool down pumps or actuating sensors and servos before startup and that sort of stuff. So that's a lot of stuff. Why aren't you in a larger vehicle? You might be wondering. Well, I just can't justify the purchase, especially in today's car market. So I'm building everything that I want, that I would want in a larger vehicle I'm putting it into the fun little car that I currently have. Removing everything will be easy enough. I'm really experienced at putting stuff in and taking it out, so it's not a big deal. In fact, I can practically take it out as packaged and then just put it into a different car, larger vehicle, whatever it is that I had decided to build out. It's, I think it'll be pretty easy uh, for me anyway. Now, one thing that I haven't discussed is this device right here. This is my charger for the lithium batteries, and I think there's enough going on here that I'm going to discuss this in a different video, a separate video. So join me next week to learn more about that. As always, I appreciate you being here, and I'll see you next time. Take care.